Welcome to Arts Talk TV. We're putting a spotlight on creativity. Hi, I'm Karina Lawrence and welcome to Arts Talk TV. So I'm here at the Aerial Angels Academy in Varsity Lakes, Queensland on the Gold Coast. Now, the Academy has acclaimed itself on some very high level standard training and teaching in Cirque, Acrobatics, Dance and Aerial Training. And I'm very excited to introduce the founder of Aerial Angels Australia. She is a sought after producer, not just here in Australia, but also throughout the world. Please welcome to the show, Sue Porrett. Oh, thank you. <laughs> so great to have you here. Thank Thanks. you so much for sharing your knowledge. So. Where did it all begin for you, Sue? Oh gosh, how far do we want to go back? Um, um, well, you were a, a circ trainer yourself, aerialist. In, well, back in the day, actually, I was one of those young girls who ran away and joined the circus. <laughs> so yeah, I um, I was a 15-year-old professional. I started off with Ashton Circus, which was uh, an incredible, amazing, big old traditional style show. Toured for a couple of years with them, and then sort of circus jumped to some different shows and I was taught the art of aerial so I had a wonderful career being a trapeze artist back in the day when it wasn't so in vogue as it is now. And was there like family orientated? Do you have family background in the circus? Uh, I actually, well, my family were um, carnival owners so I'm actually a traditional carny. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I am. The circus world in general it goes back to the old school uh, traditional values of circus that we all wear many hats. Yeah. Um, and back in my day in the circus, when as a young girl, you know, we would be, I would be cleaning the animal pens, the lions and the monkeys, and oh. getting bitten, got a few scars <clears throat> as well, like go there. Um, but then, you know, then five minutes later, I'm putting makeup on to go out on a stage. I joined the circus, had a wonderful career, but there's a part of me that always knew that there was something more for me after that. Um, and I was always trying to fix things and clean things and I was always writing stories and I could always see that oh, I could do that better, I could do that better, but that, you know, privately I would say that to myself. Yeah. yeah, it came the opportunity as I grew older and learnt more to um, create something for myself. And I left the circus and created an act called an act, actual aerial act called the Aerial Angels. That's where it derives okay. from. Myself and my best friend Tegan, and we had a beautiful aerial act, a doubles act, and we toured the world with that. Mm -hmm. So we really had a an incredible um, monopoly. Yeah, uh, and it was amazing. We went all around the world. It has become highly sought after now, like the oh, aerial. Yeah. Um, so it creates that opportunity and extension for performing artists in their training as well. 100%. Yeah, yeah it's definitely, um, I mean, we know here at Cirque Central now we have students that want to come and do full-time courses here. And it's usually around five years mm -hmm. old up. So we have different categories for the, the juniors and the tweens and the teens. Yeah. And they go on to the elite uh, classes, then they go into the professional classes and some full-time classes. So there's all sorts of um, different there's scholarships, there's all sorts here. You've had 20 years of experience or over 20 oh, years yeah, of experience. Been, uh, 35. And all across <laughs> the world. I will just question you in, in regards to do you feel the fact that you're contributing it but do you feel there is a lack of circ industry or not so much now? I do feel like there is a lack of governed circ industry. It's a very grey area and from myself being very experienced, if not one of the most experienced, don't want to toot my own trumpet. No, but it's... But it's, I am, it very, it's very, to me, I'm constantly concerned that various other venues are putting up equipment um, and not... Knowing. Following regulations. Yeah. Yeah, and I think it, it's, it's, a, it's certainly not governed and you know I, I spot little dance schools putting up silks and things and it's like oh, you know it's just when you know what I know. Well you know. you've had the experience it's That's been your right. whole life so. We teach you very we're very boutique we teach you very technical because we want um, the performers to have a, a, a long uh, Jevity. Jevity in the industry if they're taught wrong their shoulders bra break out you know burn out in you know less than two years it's it's got to be done properly mm. and that's my only concern of my industry is that not regulated. 
I know a big vision for you, which I think is phenomenal. You know, giving back to the industry as well when you've been a long, had a long-standing career as a performer yourself, and your vision behind creating, you know, this global creators and educator facility is to give them the opportunity, train them up, and then create the work that they can go on and, and pursue their own aerial career yes. or circ career. We have some of the most incredible, talented uh, circ performers and dancers and acrobats in the world that are based in Queensland. And it is very important to us to, to keep these people in work because they train so hard. I know my experience because I kind of worked along with you with um, Lumiere. Lumiere, you did? Yes, and, uh, one of your incredible shows that played here in Australia at the casino. Well, it was under a big top initially. Well, first it was under a big top yes. because I did that to try and lure the <laughs> casino people to come and see the show. Yeah. And it worked and they did yeah. and then they gave us an opportunity to take it take the show yep. there. Yeah, so and, and then it also toured internationally. It did. Over in Malaysia? It did. I believe. It yeah. went over to Malaysia. It also went to parts of it went to Hong Kong as well. Wow. Um, and they're all big sellout seasons. So. And so you basically took a lot of Australian talent that oh, were already yes. in the show oh, yeah, and allowed them to mm. experience travelling with their craft as well. Yes. See, brilliant. And they loved it. Brilliant opportunity. Yeah. Yeah, why would you not? Yeah, it's you know? a pretty cool career. You're creating that environment in the sense of corporate, um, casinos, theme parks here in Australia and obviously on the Gold Coast, um, but also all over the world. Yes. Like, what would be your suggestions? I know we've we've talked from a business point of view before of like you know you have opportunities in your pitching um, because a lot of it is implementing funding. Yes. <laughs> Yes, which one thing I, I've never had. <laughs> so you you've just everything done has this. been hundred wow. percent. Yeah. And risk my taker, advice see? is I was just about to say that mm. is risk taking and that's you know I always do the rocking chair test myself. I always sit and imagine myself at eighty years old rocking in that chair thinking, would I regret not doing this? And I always seem to say yes, I would regret it. So I go hammer and tongs for everything I I yeah. want in my team. I have the most amazing team that back me. This is such a wonderful career and you know I think I am really one of those people that have never worked a day in their life. I do what I love. So tell us, you've been nominated for a few business awards, I believe. Oh, over the years, yes. <laughs> I've been lucky enough to win some amazing awards and I actually I was a finalist this year in the Gold Coast Business Women Award of the Year. Wow. Which was amazing. So, Incredible. Yeah, it's an honour. It's such a huge honour because you're nominated by people um, in the industry? Yeah, in the industry. And yep. I was lucky enough to be nominated by four actually individual people for that award. Wow. So it was very, yeah, it's such a beautiful accolade. I'm very proud. I say this to myself a lot. I, I had a, pa a pocket full of passion and a childhood dream. And that's what has created the, the actually the circus school. Because I never had a circus school as a little girl. And it's all I ever wanted to do was go and learn how to be a trapeze artist. And there was nowhere to go because there weren't circus schools. Yes. So this is a dream of mine to have a place for young girls and boys, oh my gosh, oh, to yes. come, and we have plenty of boys, oh, yeah. to come um, and learn this incredible art form. And it's, not only is it, it sets you up for a wonderful career, it's such a healthy lifestyle. Um, it's, you know, aerial is so wonderful for the, the body, the physique, mm -hmm. no impact on joints. So it's really, really good for, everything is just amazing about it, it's tick, tick, tick. Because I know you speak very highly of your team. Yes. And they're obviously a big part oh. in the success. So yes, they constantly make me look really good. <laughs> really good. You've yeah. got a good team then. You know, some of them have been here 20 years from day dot, 16 years, 15 years. We're all over 10 years. On our own we can do so, so little, little, but together we can do so much. Yeah. And that is something that teamwork I... Teamwork makes the dream work. work. And, you know, mm -hmm. it's it's common sense. Bring everybody yeah. together and you will, yeah. you will um, learn, learn and prosper. And yep. Yeah. It's the same with any relationship, really. 100%. So, yeah. yeah, it's amazing that you've clearly gravitated that towards you as yeah. well. The old school thinking, keeping your cards closed. Old school thinking. So, not only are you creating opportunities for aerialists and, and circ performers as such, but by producing, you're also creating that work in alignment of supporting the industry, which, you know, choreographers, yes. AV specialists, oh, yeah. lighting, sound. Yeah. Um, there's so, a lot behind the show, isn't there? There's so many incredible, talented, amazing people that bring 
shows to life. So yes. that's about the team as well. Oh yes, 100%. Yeah, we yes. can't do it without them and no. they don't, they can't do it without us that's ultimately, exactly right. you know, yes. so yeah. yeah, very true. Yep. Okay, so some of your credits, you can just sort of um, fire at uh, whatever they mean to you. Great Moscow Circus. Oh, that was a great one, the 50th anniversary tour. We did that one for the, the touring show in Australia. That was great fun, going back to my roots, loved it. Yeah, yeah. did you perform in that as well? No. <laughs> Why not? I want to see you. Now I'm getting inspired to go. I want to see you create you your magic. You won't see me up there anymore. Okay. <laughs> wow. Solaria? Solaria. Solaria is a show that I put on at Jupiter's Casino, which is now the star. Uh, they needed a show for a Christmas period. The name is Solaria. People often ask me, Where is, where'd you get that name from? Um, I have two daughters and one is named Soleil, named after famous Cirque du Soleil and the other child, the other daughter is named Aria. And I just sometimes call them Solaria accidentally and one day I went, oh, that's a great name for a show. So I call that so show Solaria. So they inspired you? Yeah, they always inspire me. Of course. Yeah. So it's, it's a carnival. Their, it's their show. show. See? It's their show. They yes. Their little, their little tick to that one, yes. And Zirkus by memory. Zirkus, it's mm -hmm. another show um, we played at the start. That was a huge, big, a really big seller, that yes. one. A traditional uh, show with a bit of a, a funky edge, mm -hmm. yeah. Zirkus. We've obviously talked about uh, Lumiere. Lumiere's my in, baby. Yeah, that originated here. Yes, beautiful, wonderful, colourful show. Storyline, very universal, a girl is lives in a world of darkness and she finds a beam of light and is transported to a world of colour. Beautiful. And then she visits all the different beautiful, colourful parts of the Lumiere world. Beautiful. Yeah, I love that show. Play the game. Play the game. Play the game was a very early on show um, that was in Cannes Casino. Great contract because we got to stay in Cannes for a year. Love Cannes. Beautiful. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Spellbound. In Cannes same. as well, yes, actually. Yes, same. magic show that one. Wow, yeah. beautiful. Touch the Sky um, and Aqua Voyage. Ah, or Voyage. so this is, that's, this is a good little story behind this one. This is a, in Asia's biggest theme park, which is based in Hong Kong. It's called Ocean Park. They had a typhoon come through their theme park and wipe out one of their huge, big, amazing rides. And it was four weeks before their big school holidays opened. So I had a contact there who I had done work for previously for an event for her years and years before and she remembered me and so years later she rang me and said so uh, this has happened can you please put a show together so we created a show in four weeks and, wow. and played it there for three months and it was sold out every show brilliant yeah and then that was oh gosh about 15 years ago we've been back there pretty much every year with a, another big show and this lady who I've spoke to is now one of the the biggest managers in the theme park world and so she's so connectivity connect and, and it's just and then, those little things like mm. that this all also came from me helping her back in the, the event that we've made contact she had an artist pull out of an event that was opening up and wait for it in two days but she found me and she said to me um they've, they've pulled out we open in two days so I got a performer um, on a plane that night um, and flew them over and they ended up opening that following day for them. So she's never, she never forgot that. Yeah. And especially when you were in Would have been really Asian, impactive under the massive, circus, circumstances. Massive, massive. And it would have, you know, ruined her reputation. Being Chinese, it's all about respect and mm. the right thing. So she was in a very, very, you know, difficult position. So I came to her rescue and helped her with that and she never forgot. See? And a very, a very good point to make here to, you know, it's even the littlest things in the industry, people don't forget and that relationship has built an incredible relationship now with Ocean Park, who I've been there for 15 years, and it really has, um, gosh, injected a lot of dollars into Aerial Angels. It's not just about receiving, yeah, it's about c contributing. Absolutely. And I always say that, you know, you, you leave your mark and your legacy with contributing, not receiving. Absolutely. Circus of the Damned at um, Warner Brothers Movie World, because yes. I know that was a massive, yeah. Like the structural um, side of things and the production content of the show was pretty big, massive. Yeah, we had big cranes in there, and mm. we were circus of the dumb, so it was damned. So it was, uh, you know, very Halloween based. Yeah. And the makeup was incredible, and all the eerie creatures flying around, and then all these aerial moments that we created was fantastic. I, wow. I, I loved it. Yeah. We're going to talk about your baby now. Oh. Your recent. Um, oh. 
Now, is it suave? Suave. 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 A suave. Pink flamingo At here. The pink flamingo. So this is a on the Gold Coast on in Broad Gold Coast. Beach. One of my tell dreams. Tell us. Tell us all about it. Okay, so I'm very excited. I am a part owner of the venue, and I'm also the producer of the show. So myself and my business uh, partner uh, Tony, we've worked together for 20 odd years in different ventures and things. We both got together for this particular um, project and, and idea. Predominantly it is all um, local artists, Australia-based artists, and um, they are so talented. It's honestly some of my best work. You know, as you say, it's the best you've ever achieved. It's probably also because based on experience, yeah. you know, um, and sometimes you have to go a course to, to get yeah. to a stage. You have to learn specific lessons and, and grow through that. Yes. Do you think like thinking now and all your experience, um, life experience as well, I can imagine that you look back and you just think, you know, going back to taking the risks, you believed in that and mm. you followed it through. You... That's it. And it, again, it goes back to that, that those emotions and, and not allowing fear. I, I preach this to my children all the time about fear. How is this an emotion? You know, risk taking is, is what you live once, right? So we've got a really great segment that we're introducing to Arts Talk TV. Oh, cool. Arts it's Talk called, TV, I love that. Yeah, it's called the Shutter Speed Challenge. Shutter Speed Challenge. So I'm just going to give you some questions and you're just whatever comes to your quick thinking response. It's okay? really dangerous for someone like me. Look out. Okay. Last song you listen to. Believe it. Believe it. What does creativity mean to you? Life. Person you most like to meet. Oh. Wow. That is such a good one. Person I would most like. Do you know what? Pink. Yes. I'm. I. I just love Pink. Yeah. For everything she stands for, for everything she does, I just. I love Pink. I concur. I'd love to meet her. What question would you ask her? I would ask her where she sees herself in ten years. Last piece of art that has really affected you. That, that's really affected me is my show Suave. Um, sorry, I don't, don't apologize. Again, but I have seen that show now a couple of hundred times and I'm not one bit sick of it. I, I can see it every night, I love it so much. If you had to label creativity with a colour, what colour would you choose? Green. What would you miss most about the arts? Oh, if we had no arts, oh my gosh, I'd miss everything, I'd miss the air I breathe. What's on your bedside table currently? Oh. On my bedside table is my lamp. Um, there is a big pink crystal and a little plastic horse. What chore do you most dislike doing? Oh, cleaning bathrooms. <laughs> Sorry. Whoop. In one word, what does the arts mean to you? Uh, I don't want to say life again, but it does. Li it means life. It means happiness, and it means yeah. In one word, how do I find one word? Legacy. It's been incredible having your input and your contribution and we are very, very blessed to have you in this world offering so much to the um, oh, you're emotional. <laughs> entertainment industry. Well, Thank it's you. true. Thank you, Joe. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thanks for joining us. We look forward to seeing you at our next episode.